Right then, welcome back to the channel, Stephen Alson, and today we're looking at five players that Manchester United need to sell. So going into the summer, United are, uh, I think, pretty unified in our goal to eliminate the dead wood. Oh my God, we've been talking about dead wood for so long. You think the series was making a comeback, um, and it's a full broken record at this point, but there hasn't been a season in so long where we've been without uh, such a lump sum of players uh, who are surplus to requirements at the club, whether through injury, whether through discipline, whether through attitude, whether through off the field shit, whatever it is, Manchester United have got an absolute squad that's no use to the squad. Um, so here's the five players that I think United have to sell. Number one, Jaden Sancho. Uh, obviously caused nothing but trouble for us this season if Ten Hag is going to remain as the gaffer. And you know what? Even if he's not, you can't be having someone that's just doing what he's doing and simple as that. You have to be showing that discipline comes first um, and whether or not he had a falling out with a particular manager, that can't be allowed to fester and continue. Ship him off while he's still got a semi-decent resale value. He's been all right at Dortmund. Um... It's slowed down maybe a little bit, but it looks like Bundesliga could be about right for him. He's got one goal, one assist in 10 Bundesliga games, and he's played three times in the Champions League where he scored one. I have no idea how much you would get for him, but you'd get something for him, I think. And uh, I think there's a big message there that needs sending, and he's got to go. Right, lads, gather around. You have heard me banging on about Manscaped for ages, uh, mainly discussing the virtues of a well-trimmed ball bag. But today we're gonna move a little bit north and something that you might have actually seen, my beard. Manscaped isn't just a master of below the belt grooming. They have conquered beard territory too. And I know this is groundbreaking news. Let's delve into the details. Now, we are all well acquainted with Manscaped's brilliance for the downstairs department. They've been many a savior of many a date night and many a ball bag. And you know the lawnmower 4.0 by now. I'm not going to tell you about any of the features for it because if you don't know them, then you're never going to know them, right? It's a certified hero for the never regions. But they're here for the beards now as well. And they've got the beard hedger. It is a cordless miracle worker that is both tough and gentle. It takes down facial forests in a single stroke. It's got 20 different lengths of settings. It gives you the power to totally customize your beard without cluttering up the bathroom and having a million different attachments. Now, they've also got another member of the band and it's the Handyman. That's a dual-sided foil razor that has got your back, whether it's your face, whether you're going clean shaven or just tidying up a little bit around the neck. It is the epitome of comfort in the shaving world and it's got a seamless and nick-free experience. So listen, if you want to give your beard the VIP treatment that it absolutely deserves, get over to manscaped.com, use a special code HOUSEN, you're going to get 20% off and free shipping. And while you're grooming the jewels, let's not neglect the crown. With Manscaped, who said beauty had to be a pain? Let's keep it neat and tidy, top to bottom. Number two, Donny van der Beek. Now reports are coming out... Um, with some certainty that Donny van der Beek is returning to United after his loan move at Eintracht Frankfurt. They had an option to buy him of 11 million euros, uh, but Frankfurt, not interested. Um, so he's expected to return uh, and he's expected to be looking for a new club in the summer. But there's not really much else to say on this one. Um, it hasn't worked out for Donny. And I'm not just talking about his loan move at Frankfurt and I'm not just talking about his loan move at Everton. I'm not just talking about his transfer at United. His entire career has really, really hit the skids. So I don't know what to suggest with Donny van der Beek, but I wish him luck. Um, and I just don't think we will be seeing him or should be seeing him in a Manchester United shirt again. Number three, Scott McTominay. Now, I expect this to create some comments. That wasn't the intention. It's the belief that I hold. But um, he's been pretty impactful this season and that will have driven up his value. And that's partially one of the reasons why I'm looking to offload him. United have got pressure from financial fair play that we have to adhere to. And I think Scott McTominay could raise a decent price for us he can't be a starting first choice midfield for Manchester United and the way he's been played under Eric Ten Hag as this sort of impact sort of second striker role that's not him and that's not where his ability really lies so I would say look we are getting rid of a, a lot of midfielders probably this year and I would think Casemiro probably goes as well but I think Scott brings in some 
value and someone will look at him and go, I can make a player out of him uh, with a particular sort of system. I just don't think it's what Eric Ten Hag requires at Manchester United. And I think you'll get good value for him. And it's 100% profit because he's an academy graduate as well. So all of those things really stack up nice for FFP. That's why Scott McTominay is on this list. Otherwise, I, I wouldn't mind having him around as a squad player if all of the other areas had been dealt with and FFP wasn't breathing down our necks. But it is, so he's off. Number four, Wan Basaka. Now, we're shoehorning him in at left back a little bit here because it looks like Delo has kicked on a little bit and seemingly cemented that right back spot, even though I will admit, last couple of weeks, he's he's been a bit shakier. But Wan Basaka's contribution to the club. Um, Shouldn't really be taught too down. He's pretty solid, but we overpaid for him. This year, injuries has really kept him out, and then Delo's form has probably also kept him out. And he's been thrust over to the left because of just lack of options at left back. And clearly, he isn't your typical modern day fullback. I think he's still young enough where you would get a decent fee for him. He's still got a long enough time on his contract. And I think looking for someone that can facilitate the way we're looking to play would be a bit of a, a, a boost for the team and the squad overall. Don't think you're getting the full 50 million for him. You might get 25, you might get 30. I have no idea if I'm being honest. Um, but I think you'd get some sort of value for him and money that would probably go quite far to someone that would be a definite starter for us. And number five, Harry Maguire. Now, He's in the sort of same boat with everybody else that's on this list, whereas resale value might be at its highest for a long time. He probably goes and plays every week in the Euros because Southgate loves that shit. Um, he's probably had a better than average season. He's been relatively consistent, um, and he's certainly been an important defender for us this season. That has to count for something when it comes to trying to move him on. So I think now would be a, a really good option to try and cash him in. Um, and I know there's going to be an absolute lack of centre-halves at United. But if we're being honest with ourselves, there are better centre-halves out there for Manchester United. We don't want hangers on. We're trying to get rid of sentimentality. Shake his hand and give him his marching orders off to West Ham or whoever will have him. Um, because I think that's the move that United have got to make. And you've got to be bold, you've got to be brave, and you've got to be ruthless. And at times like this, I, I think back to what's the... You know, all, all right, people moan about always looking back at what Sir Alex did, but this is where you have to be brave. You know, you moved on... I mean, honestly, the players that we're moving on here, these are not your Konchelski's Hughes and Ince, but the decision that Fergie made to rid uh, Konchelski's Hughes and Ince was tough to make. But he made it and the club went on to bigger and better things because they made those tough decisions. United have had far too many hangers on, far too many players that haven't been worth the money, either that they're on or that they cost. And we have been far too slow in acknowledging those mistakes and moving those players on when we know that they're not going to work. So let's change the strategy. Let's be better. Let's be more efficient and more ruthless. Listen, it didn't work out. No problem off your pop. That's what we need to be. We need to become the people that are getting that sort of ruthlessness. So there's the five that I think, please let me know if you agree with those five. If not, throw up your own five and let's see which five you think you can get in as well. And throw me a bit of a total up in that. What do you reckon we're getting out of that? I don't think we get 200 million, but would we get 150? You might be able to get 150 out of that. The 30 million average for each. Let me know in the comments. See you the next one. Hey, thank you for watching the video. If you are new around these parts, then don't forget to subscribe. My channel is proudly supported by my community on Patreon. If you'd like to get a little bit of extra content, a Discord group, meetups, five-a-side games, weekly podcasts, behind the scenes, and even an occasional bit of transfer news, as and when I get it, then for the price of a pint, you can show your appreciation for the content that we make and get some goodies for doing so as well. Check the link in the description or click the button right here. You'll also find all of my socials here too if you want to follow me on any of those platforms. Nice one.